there, you know, if you have a website or if you have Facebook page to maybe, you know, um, offer incentives up until that day or something <laughs> about, you know, some codes uh, or, you know, or maybe a white elephant gift or something like that. But they've got some great resources for the uh, business owners on there. And um, so we encourage everybody to go and just check it out. Okay. Folks, I have six o'clock on my, actually 6.01. Um, how about we get started? I really don't want to stay until nine o'clock tonight unless you all do. You can stay, Pam can stay with you. Um, I don't want to stay that long. <laughs> but, no way, Jose. I it's, told you it, <laughs> it's Miss Ratliff to you. But uh, uh, welcome to session four. It's hard to believe this is our fourth week. And, um, uh, this is all focused on my favorite subject is marketing. Uh, everything marketing, promotion, and customer service. It's all a critical part of any business. If you don't have a steady pipeline of customers coming in, you're going to miss out. So that's why this session is pretty darn important. And we are happy to have Michelle Workman with Virginia Tourism Corporation and Brittany Clark with the Southwest Virginia uh, Small Business Development Center leading tonight. And um, before I turn it over, Pam, do you want to make any Yes, ma'am, I will. I will let them know that, well, welcome everyone. And I just want to remind you to please turn your signed and initial guidelines in before a pitch night. We have to have those. So you can either send them to me, Margie, or Sandy. But we need those before pitch night. Okay. So far, uh, I've only received three. So again, we need those or you will not be able to pitch your business idea. Um, has everyone started working on your business plans? Okay, I really would love to see some excitement when we talk about business plans because that's Margie's thing. So we want to build her up. But And also, I hope you've had a chance to start looking at some of those business pitches from past business challenges uh, so you can get some tips. I know um, this coming Monday night, I am judging 10 uh, business pitches from the Floyd C4 business challenge. And um, I will say that this will be the first time that I've ever judged a business plan for a circus. It was interesting reading that, but I'm looking forward to the pitch on Monday night. So that was my first. Welcome in to my, Floyd. In my, in my career, yes, it's very unique. But uh, please get to working on your business plans. Don't wait to the last minute to reach out to, to Margie and her team. Um, that get, does a disservice for you, but also for them. And you need to start working on that. And trust me, it's very obvious uh, for the judges when they can see a business plan that's been developed that's had a lot of uh, review and uh, thought process or that one that I got to put something down on paper. Uh, as someone that just spent all um, the last two weeks judging business plans, it's very obvious. So spend some time, and you need this. You need this is your this is your roadmap for your business. You're the one making the investment, and so we're not. So, uh, with that said, anybody have any questions so far? Class, class, anyone, anyone? I feel like uh, Fearless Bueller on his day off. You remember that movie? Mm -hmm. Remember. Um, we want you to keep your uh, video cameras uh, on through this. This is as if we're meeting in person, um, and we want to make sure you're getting all the content that we have our uh, panelists coming and presenting to us. So um, out of respect for them, let's pay attention to what they're doing and taking notes. Again, this is one of my favorite subjects is marketing, and I love all parts of marketing. So uh, first off tonight will be Michelle Workman with Virginia Tourism Corporation. So Michelle, I'm going to turn it over to you that you can tell them more about Virginia Tourism Corporation and what you all do. And then um, Brittany Clark will follow her this, this evening. Awesome. How is everybody? I'm sad to not be doing this in person like I usually am. We were in Bosnian last year, I think. Um, doing it. So this is different. I mean, I'm sure we're all getting used to this new virtual world that we're living in. Um, I am Michelle Workman. I am a destination development specialist for Virginia Tourism Corporation. 
So we are the state agency, state tourism agency. So Virginia's for lovers. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to be here tonight. And I know some of you were here last year. So I have a few more slides, I think, than last year. But um, overall, I'm just excited to go over the basics of marketing plan and some social media and other digital marketing aspects. So I'm going to share my screen. Well, I'm going to turn off my video because my internet can get wonky around seven o'clock for some reason and 10 a.m. Things you're learning when you're working from home. Um, let's see here. Can everyone see that? No. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So because I can't see y'all anymore for some reason. So um, so I'm gonna just dive on in. Like I'm excited to be here like I was last year and like I've presented over the past few times over the past year for different challenges. Um, first and foremost, I kind of wanna dive into just the economic impact of tourism. Obviously we are in a crazy year of COVID and we just released the 2019 numbers last month, and we understand that these are going to be significantly different next year. So we're using these kind of as a baseline, the 2019 numbers for recovery. And once we get out of this pandemic and things start to, you know, get a little bit better. So employment for Tazewell County, um, it's about 573 employees in the tourism realm. Um, expenditures were about $55 million dollars. Receipts were about seven hundred forty-four thousand, and the local payroll was about twelve million. Um, so I just kind of want to dive into the general tourism economic impact before I jump into the marketing plan. Um, so this is really starting with the basics. Your marketing plan um, is really going to answer about six key questions that will help you guide your marketing strategies. So first and foremost, um, and Michelle, excuse me, have you started? Are you going to, is, are you working on your PowerPoint? Because we don't see it yet. You don't see it? Okay, no. hold on. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Hold on. What? Okay. Can you see it now? It's, yes, now it's up. Okay. Well, I don't know what happened. That was weird. Okay. I had it pulled up over there. Now let me find it on the screen. I have two screens and that's not. Are we good? Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. I thought I had everything good to go. I was trying to figure out why I couldn't see y'all. Um, okay, so here's the economic impact I was talking about. I believe you have the slides. So um, let's just dive into these six key questions. So your marketing plan is gonna answer six basic questions. Um, what are you trying to accomplish? Who's your target audience? What message will move them? How are you gonna deliver your message? Your resources and how are you gonna measure your performance? Um, so what are you trying to accomplish? Obviously, you are trying to get customers to your business, um, first and foremost. And then depending what your strategy is and what piece of that plan is, you may be trying to direct them to your website. You may also be trying to get them to become a Facebook fan and follow you on your social channels. Um, building brand awareness, educating your, off edu educating your audience on what you offer. Um, so making sure they know you are a restaurant and what you sell. And then so you may want to be known as the best restaurant in Richlands, um, the fastest car service in Caswell. I don't know. Um, you know, just what are you trying to accomplish and what do you want people to know about your business? Okay. Um, who is your target audience? Obviously, this is going to be key um, with trying to figure out who you want to attract. So whether that's by your demographics, um, by where they're located, are you trying to draw within the area? Um, are you trying to pull them from outside of the area? What are they needing and wanting? And who are those people now? And who could they be in the future? And then another question that comes up a lot is, well, how do I figure out who my target audience is? So as you're working with Margie on your business plan or the SVDC, um, you'll be doing research to help develop that. Um, you can also do surveys. You can reach out to clubs if you're in a specific market. You can also ask your competition. It doesn't hurt to ask them, um, who do they target? Where do they get customers from? Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, some people may be a little bit more tight-lipped, but you never know. So some people are very open to help others. And then also, as you're looking into um, looking at different advertisers or magazines or even media, they offer, they usually have um, demographic profiles of their readership. 
um, or their viewers. So it doesn't hurt to ask them as well and incorporating that and making sure it fits within that target audience you're looking at. Next, how are you gonna deliver your, your marketing message? Um, obviously, digital media is huge now. We will be talking a lot more about that later, um, but you have your website, you have search engine optimization, you have PR, public relations strategies, social media channels. Um, if your business has a blog, um, trade shows if that's applicable with your business and even e-newsletters. And then resources. So what resources do you have available to help execute your marketing plan? And thinking through obviously what your budget is, what kind of money do you have to put into it, but also kind of thinking outside of the box, like what can your family help you with? What about friends? Do you have a 16 year old son who's really into like computers and that kind of thing who can help with a website? Do you have an employee who's a young you know, teenage girl who really likes Instagram and is really good with hashtags and all of that thing, all of that. So can she help you with that strategy? Looking at partnerships with other businesses, how can you collaborate um, on your marketing? And then obviously you have your state and local federal assistance. So myself, Margie, um, Sandy, we're all here to help. And then local chamber of commerce and then any other business associations that could be helpful with marketing your business. And then how are you gonna measure this performance? Obviously you don't just wanna put money in different buckets and then it not, being, it not getting you business that you need. So obviously you can use your social media analytics. So if, you're, if you have strategies that are driving people to your website, you can make sure they're getting there and where those people are coming from. You can collect data, you have research mechanisms that you can use. So whether that's a URL that attaches to a certain advertising piece you have, whether you have a coupon code that ties back to a certain printed material, um, even asking for customer zip codes, that way you can figure out who, where your customers are coming from and is your marketing working, working to those areas. And you may even realize you're getting customers from different areas that you weren't, you weren't planning to. Um, surveys, informal questioning, so asking customers how they heard about you um, when they come and purchase, and then just looking at overall sales data. And then this slide is, I feel like, ever more important than normal. So things are always changing as we're in the year of craziness and COVID. And um, just remember, things are always changing. So you're constantly needing to look at your, your business growth. Do you need to, ch to change your marketing plan because of that? Has the research changed? Are there economic factors that are affecting your business that you need to kind of think outside of the box to draw more customers in? Um, Technology and social media are, are constantly changing. I mean, if it's, I feel like social media changes by the hour sometimes. Um, and then just remembering that there's always change. So you constantly need to be updating that marketing plan. So you're getting the results you want. And then now we're kind of gonna, we're gonna dive into kind of some of the methods of marketing and how to remember that Digital marketing, but then traditional methods are still in play as well. So direct mail, it, there's been research to show that millennials like direct mail. So sending out those direct, direct mail pieces, um, offering sales and promotions, still making phone calls, um, printing rack cards, those are still picked up um, by visitors and by customers alike. And even putting like coupon codes on those brochures so, you can, so they can bring it in and you can offer them a discount. And then there's still, you, the business card with your call to action. So whether that's to visit your website, to like your Facebook page, um, those are all still in play. And then this is kind of an example um, of, you know, things are constantly changing and then using what's going on in the world around you um, in promotional purposes. So Stamber Winery is actually in Patrick County. I don't know if anyone's familiar with it. Um, this image went viral for him. I'm not sure when exactly it came out, but it's, he was using current events. So a snowstorm to market his winery. So obviously in the red, you have, it's going to snow a lot. You need a case of wine. Um, in the green, you might not need as much, but you still need about nine bottles. And then the yellow six and then so on and so forth. So this, he got out probably the week of, or, a few, or quite a few days before the, the storm. Um, and hopefully he had people ordering boxes of wine and he was able to help them through their snowstorm. But he did say it went viral for him. So that's um, 
exciting to see how you can use current events to your favor. All right, now digital marketing. So this is a huge, huge um, realm of marketing. Um, obviously you have your website, which should be your foundation of your digital marketing strategy. Um, about 45% of your budget could be put on digital. Obviously that depends on your business type. Um, you have social media, e-newsletters, and then SEO, so search engine optimization. And we'll talk a little bit more about those. So first and foremost, I know some of you are in business um, already. Let's talk website. This is a question that I feel like I always get, and I feel like Margie gets it too, based on some of our conversations in the past on how do I develop a website? Who can I go to to help me develop a website that's not going to cost me $5,000? Um, so before one of my recent one of these sessions, I did some digging into website development um, and found these these platforms. I think everyone's familiar with some of these. So Wix, Weebly, WordPress, I've heard of Square, Squarespace, Bold Grid's a little, I've never heard of that one, but um, Wix and Weebly seem to be the most user friendly and they have different levels of, um, I guess, what you get what you pay, you get what you pay for. So Wix, you have the highest amount was $39 a month with the lowest being, let's see here, where are my notes? 13. And then you have Weebly, which the highest was 26 and the lowest was zero. So these are very cost effective um, avenues you can use to help develop a website. You could potentially do it. Like I said, do you have a teenager who could potentially create these? I believe they have some pretty easy layouts that are easy to do um, but it's a really great place to start and there are students out there that can help with this as well um, but I know this is a lot of the questions I get when new businesses are starting out how do I get a website social media so this is I'm pretty sure there's more social channels now than there was when I made this chart TikTok on here I don't know how many people are on TikTok um, we have always said for social to pick one and do it well before you expand. Um, so obviously most people are going to pick Facebook to start off with, and then they may go into Instagram, depending on your business, Twitter may be a fit. Um, along with Pinterest, we're seeing more and more people use Pinterest these days. Um, like before, I know when it first started out, it was very popular. Um, YouTube, Snapchat, LinkedIn, like I said, TikTok. We're starting to also realize that social media is the kind of the purest form of PR. It's always people usually talking about your business, whether they're reviewing it or sharing it. So let's see here. So like I said, it's about people talking about you. Um, and it's also starting to become a way you foster relationships with your customers. So when people leave you comments um, or let's say you're doing a live sale on your social platform, you can really start to build that relationship with customers and potential customers. And then it's also about having the customer sell for you. So by leaving reviews or by sharing your business, um, it's great for PR and word of mouth. And then this is just something I stumbled across um, when, I was when I was getting ready. I've never seen one of these in a business, but I think it's a really great way to kind of get your new business out there. Um, especially if you're new and you're just opened or if you're a restaurant, you could have these at the table. And if people share that they were at your restaurant, maybe you could offer a 5% discount. Um, but I think it's, a, I, I think it would be a great way to kind of get your name out there with people who are sharing this with their friends. Um, just a little example. And then I'm sure everyone's familiar with Facebook, but this is just a general overview um, of what a business page looks like. So you have your cover photo, your profile picture, you have the about section. Um, it's just a general overview for those who aren't familiar with the business side. And then just like a marketing strategy, you really need to have a strategy for Facebook. So this is, an, this is our strategy for Virginia Tours and Facebook. So it's to generate interest in the Virginia travel product by engaging with beautiful imagery compelling headlines, brief descriptions, ultimately directing consumers to content to learn more and plan a trip. So our purpose of our Facebook is to drive consumers to whether it be Virginia.org, which is our visitor website, or one of our blog posts, which we share all the time on social. So our main reason is to drive people to our website. 
And then obviously you also use it for customer service to build those customer relationships for travel inspirations, what we use it for. Um, you may be offering special offers and sales through your social channels, building your brand, driving traffic to whether that be your website or um, online store. And then this is just an example of our some ads we've done in the past. So these are sharing events that we events that are on, listed on our website. This is kind of what it looks like when you do a boosted post. And then the one thing that's great about Facebook, and I'm not sure how many have done sponsored posts in the past, but just like we were talking about creating a target audience, you can really use Facebook and Instagram to kind of dive down into where you want to target consumers, how old they are, um, what are they men or women? Are you targeting both? And what their interests are, which is great with Facebook. So let's say you are a tap house, because I know we have one of those on here. So you could put one of the interests is craft beer. Um, you're a boutique, you could put fashion. So that's one thing that I think is really great about Facebook is you can really um, narrow down that focus for your Facebook ads. And then like I've said, like we've said, it's about, it's about building customer relationships on social these days. So making sure you're monitoring those comments, you're liking those comments. If anyone has any questions or concerns, you're addressing those comments. Um, that way they know someone is behind the social account and that they really do truly care the experience that you have or you've had at their establishment. Now, Instagram. How many people are on Instagram? I can't see everyone, but also I can only see four of you. <laughs> um, so Instagram, so as they're, they're now Facebook sisters, what I'm gonna call them, even though they're owned by Facebook. Um, so I know their business accounts aren't super, super new, um, but they, some people probably aren't familiar. So I'm just kind of gonna, I'm gonna talk about the business side and then the personal side of the accounts and then pros and cons. Um, so let's say you have a business and you don't know what to do. Should you make a business account? Should you keep it personal? Um, personal accounts you can actually keep private so you can have the little lock so creepers can't come, you know, send you messages and comment on your stuff. Like, but you know, do you really want that as a business? Um, it's kind of got an authentic authenticity factor. You can link multiple accounts to one Facebook page, and then you do have higher visibility amongst your friends because Facebook does value that friend over a business. The cons, you don't get analytics, there's no contact you button, and then there's no links within stories. So just like Facebook, you have analytics based on posts. Um, you can see who's seen it and see who's not. Um, business account, pros. It's free, there's a contact button. So whether there's a call button or an email button or a message button, that's all there. You get analytics or insights. You can promote posts. So just like Facebook, you can do promoted posts. You can narrow down who you want it to go to. You can see the insights from those promoted posts. You can add links to stories. I'm, that's one thing that I, I'm not sure if you have to have 10,000 followers. I know that's usually how it is to add links, but that's still a great option if you have an online store and you have that capability, you can do the swipe up. And then you can create ads. So it's the same tool as Facebook. And then the cons. So you must have a Facebook page for your business, which I don't know if that's, I mean, obviously, hopefully you would have a Facebook page for your business, but um, that is how it's going to connect. You must be labeled as a business. And I believe there's different categories you can choose from. And then, like I said before, you're going to, it's pay to play. Um, so Facebook and Instagram, they realize people value their friends more and their family more. So to get out there, you're going to have to pay to play. And then along with all those socials, social can become very overwhelming. I have um, multiple DMO, destination marketing organization directors who mark days on their calendar during the month to go in and schedule these posts because Running social media channels can get very overwhelming um, and making sure you have everything posted and scheduled is a great way to kind of stay ahead of the game. So having a social media calendar um, could really help with that. So whether you're going to start a sale, um, let's say it's starting on the 7th and ending on the 9th, you can put that on your calendar. You can go ahead and go in and schedule your posts, just go live for whenever you would like those to go. Um, if let's say you're going to work with a local news station and you're going to do a press uh, news story on 
a coat drive you're running. Um, you can mark that as well. So that would be a great way to kind of get your name out there without having to pay for an ad. Um, and any other anticipated ad pl placements you have or any other schedule, let's say you get new shipments on every Tuesday, you could do a, a video or whatnot of the new shipments you're getting on Tuesday. And then I know Brittany is going to dive in um, more onto like the scheduling tools for social media. I believe Hootsuite she's going to kind of talk about, but this is just kind of a list of um, different, I guess, apps or websites that can help you manage social media. So some of them are free. Um, there's cost of some of those, but it's a great way to kind of handle your social media and figuring out um, when to schedule posts in one place. All right, now let's talk about getting found on, on Google and Bing and all those other search engines. So search engine optimization, I'm not sure how many are super familiar with it. Um, it can be a intimidating term, but it really is just those keywords you are using to get found on a search engine. So, um, so search engine optimization, so 93% of all website traffic is driven by search engine. 85% um, of searches are done in Google. I don't know who uses any other search engine. Um, the only other one I can think of is Bing. But um, for myself, I can say I'm definitely in that in that section of who uses the, the search engine to drive traffic. I don't know if I've ever, I ever type in a web, website in the web browser. I think I always just go to Google and type in all and just go in from there. Um, and then 72% of the relevant contact content is most effective for the SEO. So making sure your content is relevant and that'll, that usually helps you get on the first page of search results. So content is king, um, it's the number one driver. And then search engines actually love unique content. So they use what you put in your web page to match up to what the consumer is looking for in its search query. And also another thing to note, you can even, the images on your website, you can even use SEO tags on those as well to help get to that first page of search results. Um, now, what do you do about that? How do you improve your search engine optimization? So you can see what your um, competition's doing. You can see what keywords they're using. Um, keywords are important right after content. You can also use Google's Keyword Planner. Um, and then there's some other options out there like Uber suggests, but um, there's great ways to kind of look into your SEO. We actually have a co-op with Google um, that I'll talk a little bit more about um, that helps with that as well. And then we get questions a lot on what should your marketing budget look like? Um, and this obviously is gonna vary depend on your business, um, depending what services you have, depending what um, you offer, but digital 45%, Advertising 20, public relations 20, printed materials 5, and trade shows 5. Obviously, this is going to vary, um, but usually these days, digital marketing is the heavy um, part of that budget. And then some common questions. Um, when is the best time to post? We I get this question all the time, especially when somebody's just starting out, trying to figure out to post, what's the best time to post. Um, we have found, and that's going to really depend on the insights of your um, fans and your followers. So you need to look at your insights and seeing when they're available and when's the best time for you to post for them. But then we, we have found for Virginia tourism that Saturdays and Sunday mornings are good. And then evenings after dinner, that's what we found on Facebook. But like I said, it's really going to depend on your fans and followers. But this is just another example I found, um, oh, there it um, and it kind of goes through the different channels and the best day of the week to post and the best time to post. So Twitter, it was Thursdays around five. Facebook, um, it's Thursdays after eight. Um, but this is really just the day and the best time, um, not necessarily together. And then Wednesdays at nine a.m. Wednesdays and then nine a.m. So I guess LinkedIn is the channel that people think they can look at at work because it's professional. Um, and then we have Instagram. It says Friday is a good day to post. And then after 7 p.m. And then Pinterest for those crafties who wake up in the middle of the night. Apparently 1 a.m. is a good time to post. Um, and then on Fridays. 
I don't know if people are looking for the weekend DIY project projects on Fridays, but apparently 1 a.m. is a good time for that as well. And then how often should I post is a question I we get a lot. Um, for Virginia Tourism, we're a pretty big office. We post two to three times a day, no less than four hours apart. Um, and then we recommend for smaller offices, smaller tourism offices, we say two to three posts a week and then large offices a post a day. So don't, you know, break your back um, posting, feeling like you need to post multiple times a day. If you are a small business, two to three times a week would suffice, I'm sure. Um, once a day, if you, if you can handle that or schedule it ahead of time. And then Facebook ads, is it worth the money? I don't know if we have anyone on here who's actually used Facebook advertising. I think Sandy has for some, I mean, obviously business challenges and stuff. Um, it, it is worth the money from what, as long as it's engaging and relevant um, and what people are looking for, it is definitely worth the money. It's actually probably the what most cost-effective way to market these days, um, which is great for small. Yes, Sandy. I was just gonna say one of the reasons I like it, I can be very, very targeted by mm -hmm. my audience, not only by you know zip code and, and area, but even by uh, age group or yes. female or whatever it is I'm looking for. So uh, I can't, you can't really do that in any other uh, advertising medium uh, mm -hmm. that Facebook has to offer and, it, and any time I can stop it. Yes, and you can add more and you can get your results pretty quickly, um, which is great. So if, you, if you're putting something out there and you're realizing it's getting a lot of engagement and the money's about to run out, you can go in and add more, um, which is great. And like, saying, like I said earlier, that's one of the reasons why I like the Facebook advertising is you can narrow down that target audience by location, by age, by gender, um, by interest. Now, let's talk about... Customer service, um, and to me, this is marketing. I come from a hotel background. Um, it is very important with word of mouth. Um, so customer service, word of mouth, I feel like they go hand in hand. Um, if somebody has a great experience at your restaurant, at your store, they're more than likely going to tell a friend or a family member. And as terrible as it is, a lot of times if people have a worse, a bad experience, they're even more likely to tell a lot of people. Um, so that's why customer service is so important. Um, people buy from people they trust. So if I tell my friend that I had a great experience, they're going, more than likely gonna go look and shop at that establishment. Um, and then with ads and self-proclamation, people are only 20% likely to shop there. So customer service, review websites, social media, all have so much in common with word of mouth these days. Um, with social media, even like if, even if I don't see my friend who lives in DC, I can tell her about an experience and she, if she's in the area, she'll probably stop there. She knows I had a good experience. So good customer service. Like I said, it encourages word of mouth. Um, it helps with repeat visitation. So obviously if someone has a great experience at your restaurant, at your store, um, they're more likely to come back and either eat there or um, bring a friend or tell their friends. Um, so that encourages them to come back again and to spend more money with you. It can be a low cost way to increase profit. So with that repeat visitation, and if it's done right, um, it can imp improve employee satisfaction and morale. So let's um, and then some other strategies. So make sure you offer solutions as soon as possible. So if somebody has a bad experience, make sure you are addressing that right then and there. Um, providing a little something extra unexpected and hiring the right people. I can't say that one enough. Um, coming from a hotel background and doing interviews with so many people, you know who will be good with people at the front desk versus you know, maybe behind the scenes. And then having a plan, and I know Brittany's gonna talk a little bit more about customer service and some management systems, I think. Um, so making sure your employees are empowered to provide solutions to problems. 
Um, if you're not there, if the manager manager's not there, so let's say somebody's food came out cold, they know, you know, maybe offer them the discount or give it to them for free um, to help address and provide a res resolution to that customer's problem. Um, have consistent training. So this is also important, especially if you were in a business that has a high turnover rate. So making sure you are constantly providing customer service training and making sure everyone is always um, following that plan and then maybe even offering a rewards program. So one thing we did when I worked for Marriott was we had surveys. So we'll talk about surveys in a little bit. So if anyone was ever named in a survey from a customer that was a compliment, they got money. Um, if we ever had a customer come up to us and compliment them saying that they were great in the hallway or they were great um, cleaning my room, we gave them money as well. So just making sure you have a reward program in place so your employees know that their work doesn't go unnoticed, um, especially when dealing with the customers. And then establishing those procedures. And then, like I said, monitoring surveys. So we would monitor those weekly. Um, so making sure your customers are having a good experience. And if there was one that didn't have a good experience, make sure you're addressing that with the employees so they understand that it's imperative that they provide good service. All right. Now, um, I don't know how many are tourism related businesses, but I'm going to kind of go through what Virginia Tourism has to offer um, as an agency. So we really have a digital marketing presence. We have public relations. We have research. So like I showed the numbers in the beginning for economic impact, we have our brand. So Virginia's for Lovers, it's um, 50, over 50 years old. Um, Orientation, we have some grant funding sources. So we are a large, not large agency, but we offer a variety of services. Um, I'm gonna hit about this a little bit because this is actually probably helpful to everybody. So as you know, we started this March 16th was I think the first day we were told to work from home. Um, I know I never expected to probably still be working home in November. Um, but here we are. So early on in the beginning, we developed this industry response toolkit for COVID. So anything that we know of resource wise, whether that's funding, whether that's workshops that Sandy offers, Sandy and Marty offers, um, whether that's the campaigns we're working on, whether that's research that comes out weekly for travel, um, everything located in this toolkit. It's on our website, VATC.org. Um, we have posters for masks, um, phase three guidelines, everything that comes across our desk, whether that's a local locality funding program, usually gets put in this toolkit. Um, one thing to note for those who are not familiar, and I'm just going to hit this, is the Rebuild Virginia grant program. I don't know if anyone's applied for that or anybody's looked into that yet, um, but they've done a lot of expansion to that over the past few weeks. He just get put in 30 more million dollars into the program um, and now they're offering up to $100,000 in grants for small businesses. So make sure you're looking at that, um, especially if you're already in business um, to see if you may be able to apply. But I just wanted to hit on that because that's a great resource for everybody if they're looking for business resources during COVID. And then probably the most important thing is if you're a tourism business, make sure you're listed on virginia.org. That is our visitor website. You can list yourself for free. You can add pictures. Um, you can even, um, if you have events at your business, you can put those on there as well. Um, if you offer, if you're a wedding venue, if you, you can also make itineraries that feature your business and get those posted on, posted on there as well. Um, and using our website and making sure you're listed on there will also help with your SEO. So we pay into search engine optimization. So listing your business on our website or attraction also pays and also will help you with your search and optimization. And then the development team, that is where I fall um, as a development specialist. So we are here to provide business development services. So whether that's marketing assistance, um, helping you with any of the services we offer at Virginia Tourism. Um, we also do tourism product development. So spearhead trails, um, working with the localities who are developing trail systems um, funding assistance so we can be a liaison to other funding partners or other agencies and then just an industry liaison so if you ever have a question and um, I can I know someone who could help answer it, answer it I could connect you to them as well 
And then one of our funding programs um, is the marketing leverage program. And it, the slide's a little different these days because obviously we're in COVID. Um, we usually offer this program twice a year. So we usually offer it in fall and spring. We just did one recovery grant round. The awardees were notified last week, um, but we do not have funding for the spring yet. So we don't know what that's going to look like. Um, if we're going to be able to offer it in the spring or what it's going to look like moving forward, but it, it's a reimbursable matching grant. Um, it's three Virginia partners who work together to develop a plan um, to promote Virginia and extend the Virginia's for Lovers brand. COVID, because obviously that's kind of changed that. Um, and then things that will cover, it covers, you know, print, digital, broadcast, billboards, um, printing and creative costs, digital and photography production, um, any fulfillment, trade show, displays. Um, it covers a lot of things. Hopefully, once we figure out the funding for next year, we'll be able to release it again. Um, and then what it won't cover. It's not going to co cover swag. It doesn't cover travel accommodations, um, signage, because um, that can get pricey. And then who can apply? It's the one great thing about that program is th any three minimum of three partners can apply. So it can be businesses, it can be localities, um, it can be events, attractions, which is great. Um, DMOs, nonprofits, and then there's only a minimum of $250 to match. And then the other great thing is you can actually use your existing marketing budget as your match. So you're not needing to find any additional money to use as your match. You can use your current marketing budget. And then um, how to get involved. So you can use the Virginia's for Lovers brand. Um, we have on our website, you can go and just request logos. We have mountain lovers, craft beer lovers, outdoor lovers, wine lovers. Um, so you can go and request our brand and use not any social or any campaigns you're doing. You can join our co-op program. We have some great co-op opportunities with social media. So Facebook and Instagram, Google AdWords, um, Blue Ridge Outdoors, if that's a fit. So quite a few others. Participate in our LoveWorks program. I know Tazewell County is full of LoveWorks, but that program is still available. Um, we'll provide up to $1,500 matching for a love work. Um, you can advertise with our welcome centers and then apply for our marketing leverage program next time it is open, which you can use the marketing leverage funds for all of those things I just listed above. And then if you wanna learn more about VTC, we do have an orientation, usually in Richmond four times a year. That's changed this year. We offered our first virtual orientation a couple weeks ago. Um, and I believe all those sessions are actually gonna be loaded onto our website. But hopefully we had a great response. I think we had 100 and 200, 200 people registered, um, but it was over four days and it was a couple hours each day, which was great. Um, but those are going to be loaded. You can sign up for our e-newsletter, our PR leads, and then establishing relationships with myself or any of our, any of our other VTC divisions. And that's all I have. So if anyone has questions, let me... figure out how to stop sharing my screen. There we go. Hold on, okay. Who has questions? Does, has anybody taken advantage of the co-op advertising? Through? And I can I, put a link to that over here. Donald? I have a quick question about SEO. Mm hmm. I will try to answer, but I'm OK. Thank you. Is it can you pay for SEO or do you have to pay a third party for SEO? Oh, Lord. Um, it's free. Yeah, it's there's just keywords. Correct. You can help me with that, Brittany. Yeah. Um, it just basically is like when you're skimming a book and you it studying and you see the words in bold you're like okay those are key things so it's picking words that um somebody might google like if you have a, a small appliance repair you know you might have the words um you know dryer won't heat or, or um it's going boom 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 you know um you might have those words somewhere on your website 
in different pages or whatever, and that the the search engines pick up those words like the words in bold, you know, in print, and they use that to um, it just elevates the the rank of your um, business when search things are displayed. So if you go to Google and you type in, you know, small apply, you know, my dryer won't heat. You'll have you'll see a list. And usually there's some that are marked add, and that is something that you can you can pay for to be yeah. displayed at the top. But okay. then when you go to the organic ones, whatever is at the top, that is the the business whose website and digital footprint had the most keywords that match this search. The most so it's definitely hot words or yes, yeah, yes. okay. And you can also, if you have a website or when you're designing a website, if the person, is, whoever is hosting your, your website, you need to submit your site map to Google. And you can do that through Google Search Console. And that also, if they have that on their radar, it also helps to increase your SEO. Um, but if you, so basically, you know, get a Google My Business profile. It's free. You know, make a Facebook profile. That's free. If you have a name, like an at something name associated with your Facebook profile, that increases your search. So even though you would think marketing and stuff, we want you to, the message to be succinct, that's true, but you've got to have the right keywords too. And that's where, you know, Michelle was talking about your target audience. You know, think about with small appliance repair, you know, usually it's the woman who's at, I mean, not to be, you know, 1950s stereotypical, but it's the female who comes up with those problems because they're loading the dishwasher or they're drying or whatever. And so you might want to ask, you know, your female friends, what is something if, if your refrigerator broke, what would you type into Google to search? You know, what are some words that you might be able to, um, to do that? To search and and then you want to think about ways to incorporate that either in a social media post or you know um something that you put out on your on your website like an update or things like that so um, one, one, one thing i'll mention too not only on your website but you can put keywords um when if you're uploading a video to youtube Mm -hmm. You can put those keywords, which is going to be found in search engines, by the way, Google owns YouTube. I yep. just want to throw that out. Same way with Facebook. If you're uploading, let's say that you did a video um, and you want to share it not only on your YouTube, but you also your Facebook page, you can go in there and add those keywords um, in there. So there's various ways. It just, even though it's free, Donald, it's going to take an investment in your time, but it's worth the investment. If you do yeah. it. Yes. And a, another quick thing real quick. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't heard it been, I've heard it talked about uh, marketing algorithms. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain that? Or are you going to explain that later on or, or explain I that? Could, I mean, we're, about it, Brittany. Um, well, it, it, it depends on kind of what you're using um, what kind of site, but um, let's say you're um, thinking about, um, you know, posting on Google, okay? Um, let's say, and I'll, and I'll do, say you're paying, Google, um, I'm working on getting my full ad certification, but I'm search and display, Google search and display ad certified. So say you have a, a brick, uh, and you can do brick and mortar or just an online business. But um, when somebody types in Tazewell, Virginia in the Google search, you want your business, whether it's online or not, to show up at the top of those results. OK, so what they will do is they will use um, they will use like because um, they'll have how many times does somebody come to your website? What is your traffic for your website? Um, how many of those site uh, people who visit actually, you know, they don't just see your site, but they go in and they, and they make a purchase. Um, and then it goes into, you know, what time of day are people posting? Um, and so they're constantly changing. And that's what Michelle was talking about with um, social media. Facebook 
keeps updating their algorithms so that people can't cheat the system. They can't um, try to find a back door to being the first to, because they want it to be a competitive marketplace, you know, like it's supposed to be, so that um, everybody has the same chance um, of being found like they do um, if you're doing it organically, if you're, if you're paying, which again, Facebook is a great way. And then with the Google ads, you can go in and say, I want to spend X amount. And this is what my goal is for this campaign. And they will fit whatever they have into that. So you won't go over. Um, you won't spend more than you're comfortable with. And they will make sure that whatever you choose, they have a, they will have their campaign, a campaign for you ready to just go. A lot of things are becoming, and I'm sure Michelle has found this, there's a lot of AI involved um, these uh, because constantly Google is, is reading um, track. It is reading, um, constantly taking all of this data and using artificial intelligence. And then it will come up with stuff that is just complete automation. You can load up, you know, say you want to do a campaign, um, sell something and you load, you can preload all your images and the words that you want to be featured and it will create five or six different ads that and will post for you without you having to think so it will the great thing is you see you hear marketing algorithms and it's kind of scary yeah. but what they what you need to know is there's a lot of ai that is taking that um scariness out and they're doing all the hard thinking for you so that when you just say, okay, I want to increase traffic to my website, then in the Google ads will say, okay, you want to spend X amount to increase traffic to your website. This is what you need to do. And it'll do what you uh, upload the components that they need and boom, they do it for you. And then you get the results saying, okay, and Google will show you, you had this many people visit your website on this day. You had it, you know, this day, let's compare it to when you weren't running this campaign. And so they're making it so much easier for us to be able to digest that you, um, you know, you don't have to have a marketing degree to see. Um, I think too, they're breaking down the terminology so that it's a lot easier for you to be able to see, um, so that you can tell what your ROI, your return on investment is. You know, you let's say you paid a hundred dollars to drive traffic to your website, and you had like a month long campaign. And you see that at the end of that month, you got not only 600 um, new views of your website, but you actually converted and had half 300 of those buy something from you. So you can see, you know, I invested 100 and I ended up making, you know, maybe $500 from this. And so that it's a little bit easier, like I said, to not have you don't have to have somebody on your staff that's a numbers person that can do all that stuff for you. But that's what they mean by the algorithms. It's just, it's based on location and um, industry and just, you know, the demographics of, of who is looking at what. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've got a question that's not directly marketing, but it's kind of Google related. Um, Google still has my location as the, uh, the business that was here three years ago. Yes. So what do I need to do to change that? Or uh, I will email you, Mr. Haver. I can do that. There is something that you, cause okay. you can go in and change it. I think what they'll probably have to do is send you a postcard with a code. Once you go in and, and make the request and that's mm -hmm. just to verify that your business is where you say it is. And okay. then you'll go in and type in that code and they should be able to update it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I have a quick question. Okay. So uh, back to Google, like they call me all the time and they say, you need to update your Google listing, but they want me to pay for it. You don't have to. Okay. Okay. I've never paid for it. Yes. I've, yeah. I think I can do this myself and everything's correct like when I Google myself, but right. anyway. 
Okay. Yes. Um, I think it's, you know, if you want to take advantage of more of the options, because they have the merchant center, like it, or if you were doing like Google shopping ads or something like that, but like, um, I think what it is, is, you know, they've realized, oh, you know, this is a great service and it's free, but as long as you are already registered, then there's no reason to, unless you want to take advantage of the other things, but to be able to be found when somebody Googles you, all you need, it's just a free page to sign up for. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Michelle? Okay, Michelle, we'll let you off duty. Brittany, take it away. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, Brittany. You're, yes, hold your on. Inter your internet's coming and going. Is Margie ready to stand in? <laughs> Seven o'clock. What I tell you? Seven o'clock. When someone calls for marketing, they get to go to Brittany for, for a while now. Hey, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Michelle uh, was from seven. So I think mine decided it wanted to do the same thing with the internet. So I'm, I'm turning it over to the rest. To, um, your next to the presentation is you. Okay. I don't have any slides. Um, just because I wanted to, it's, it's not um, going to be long or anything. Um, but for customer service, one thing that you need to think about, um, whether you're starting a business or already have one established, is how are, you know, your customers basically are another marketing um, arm for you. These are people who can sell for you. Like Michelle said, if they have a great experience, they'll tell people. If they had a bad experience, they'll tell people. And even if you would like to sell on Amazon, um, you cannot sell unless you have at least 14, um, custo 14 to 15 customer reviews for your product, because that's what people look for. They want to know that somebody else has experienced something great with, with what you're selling. So when you um, start your business or maybe you're trying to, to revamp, um, you need to think about how you're going to manage your customer database. And this day and age, it's called a CRM or customer relations management. Now, um, I might be dating myself, but, you know, in the past, I remember I would go into the store and sometimes they would have a guest book. You know, if you would like to receive our newsletter or if you would like to receive something about our um, sales, you know, you would you would physically sign the guest book with your address. So, what we're talking about is a digital way to do that. Um, there's all kinds of different um, programs that offer that, uh, but it needs to be something that's on your mind because people this day and age are looking for something personal, um, especially if you know they're very you know are kind of hesitant about going out to a brick and mortar. You go online; it's very cold. Um, they want a very personal experience, personalized for them which is why we have um, the things on Facebook and Instagram where you can select what your audience is. So you need to think about how are you going to, how are you going to capture that data related to your customer? Are you just going to ask for email addresses? You know, and we've all had that experience where we check out at a, at a store and can I have your email address? Um, so there's ways if you have a web if you have a website or, or trying to start one that you could have um, forms on that are automated into your website that will um, capture that kind of data for for a customer. Um, you can say, "Hey, join our birthday club." You know, they um, they customers want to know that they're going to get something of value if they give up their information to you. But being able and being on top of your customer database um, will help you to kind of nurture those leads and extend on. You have a customer come in and they had a great experience, let's say at your restaurant for their birthday um, and you want them to come back. So you want to keep that, you want that customer's contact information in their birthday and you want to be able to send out a reminder, hey, remember that great time you had? Well, why don't you come in this time and we'll give you 15% off for your birthday. 
Um, and there are all kinds of, like I said, um, platforms out there that can help you manage these relations so that you could send reminder emails to people. You can add, there's actually a whole bunch of text apps out there because a lot of people would rather receive something on their phone in a text form saying, come on in, we, we're, you know, maybe you're a salon. We've had a bunch of cancellations. Come on in and get your nails done at X amount, you know, off that there's all kinds of options for that. But I want you to think about how are you capturing your customer data? How often are you going to go in and clean up your data? Is it going to be, you know, this is somebody, a lot of us, you know, with um, the tourism and stuff, it might just be somebody you don't want them to have just a one-time experience. You want them to think about, hey, remember when you came and you visited me, uh, my store in Tazewell, Virginia, come back, you know, where it, the leaves are changing. You need to come and see this. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities that once you have your database set up, then you can segment your customers, you know, just like that audience um, thing on Facebook. Maybe you want to send people something about um, on their birthdays. Maybe you have a segment uh, that, you know, these are, um, you know, parents of kids in high school. You know, you've got a way to capture that data and you want to send them something. Hey, graduation season is coming up. You know, buy a graduation gift from us. So think about what is important to you to know about your customer. And um, when you're dealing with customers, especially these days, when they have a complaint or a situation, not only do they want a personalized experience, they want an immediate experience. So when you're training your employees, um, whether it's just you or you've got a whole staff on customer service, you also need to designate somebody who is going to be in charge of replying to questions on your Facebook profile, on your website, um, any kind of social media. You need one person designated to be the person to respond to any kind of issues. And you need to have a plan set up. You need to have um, a time. You want to say, okay, we need to respond to any kind of customer service issue within X amount of um, minutes or hours. Um, it needs to be probably within two hours or less if possible. Um, and now you can obviously get notifications for that so that if you're not in your physical store um, on a wet, on a phone um, computer that you could be able to um, manage that. You also need to be able to, um, with your customer service, let employees know who is going to be posting things because you don't, how many times even big corporations have messed up because they had a bunch of different people able to post and somebody posted something personal on that business um, Twitter account. So have a plan in action as part of your customer service training. What kind of information do you want to get from your customers um, so that you can contact them again. Um, what is your time span for to responding to digital um, complaints, you know, submitted to you digitally, whether that's on your social media platform or not? Have a kind of um, social media crisis plan. If somebody posts something really negative, um, you know, what is going to be your response? Make sure that you maintain that voice, your brand, when you're conveying something, it might be that you just have a standard, please private message me because you don't want to have some kind of um, viral war going out. Um, but those things need to be uh, established so that hopefully you won't need them, but that you'll already have them in place and that your employees, however many you have and whenever you may get them, um, know the established procedure. Um, I think transparency is really important to people these days, too. Um, so let them know, you know, we are if you don't know the answer to something or you don't know how to fix it, immediately respond and say, we're so sorry about this. We are working to, to rectify the situation. We'll let you know. Um, should something happen with your business and, um, you know, there's a, a not say a disaster, but you have to close for a reason. Let people know on Facebook, um, post it on your social media, let your customers know. They want to know what's going on. 
customers are not going to buy. They're not buying the what. They're buying the who. People buy because their mama likes this brand. People buy because this brand is sustainable and supports local um, water clean cleanliness. They they buy to support and because um, a certain business or corporation reflects their values. So you need to make sure that when you're dealing with your customers, you are constantly, consistently reinforcing your brand, that image that um, you want people to think about when they picture your business. Um, and then I wanted to kind of give you a um, little list or something of what the SBDC can do for you in marketing. Um, we can help you create a brand. Don't know what a logo should be? We've got a partnership with um, Southwest Community College and with Bluefield College in their design programs for students to design logos for uh, local small businesses for free. Um, don't know, how, think you might want to look at an online um, program like Canva or Adobe Spark to design a logo. Call me up. I can sit there and go and, you know, if we can't do it in person, we can do it over the phone and I'll go with you click through click and teach you how to use that program. Um, you want to do a website. You've not created one yet. Well, have you picked a font? Do you know what kind of look you're going for? Just because your computer has over, our, you know, 200, 500 fonts doesn't mean you need to use them. Comic Sans is evil. Don't ever, ever use that in a professional setting. Um, white space is good. What about the colors for your business? There are very, you know, that Tiffany blue is a very specific Pantone color. Mary Kay pink, the same. We can help you with figuring out what you want your colors to be what you want people to see on your website. You know, when you're thinking about a website, you need to think about what kind of pages do you want? What is your site map? You know, where do you want them to go? And that's what we can do for you um, at the SBDC. If you, you know, you want to know how to use Google My Business, we can help you. I can help you do that. How to create a podcast. Um, and I can get as technical or as general as you want. If you would, you know, you say you want to create a brand and you just, you know, I kind of want a flowy script. Great. I can do that. If you want to learn about serif and sans serif and spaces in between letters and um, kerning and all that stuff, I can do that for you, too. I can. My goal is to take all of these technical aspects, working with um, um, Hootsuite scheduling. I love it. You can get all of your social media planned and out of the way on a Saturday afternoon and it automatically posts for you. Um, there's tools to help you list social monitoring, social listening that can let you know anytime your business is mentioned um, online and what people are saying about it. Um, all of those things I have either learned or am learning or will learn with you. And my goal is to get you comfortable enough to do it yourself the technology, the skills and the um, programs that you're using and are comfortable to use because some of us might be able to afford to, to freelance out and have somebody do our marketing, that kind of thing. But with the way um, technology is today, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, you know, I can show you what kind of image libraries there are for you to use online um, so that you can maybe, um, you have a goal to post every, you know, so many days, but you're running out of pictures. Well, here's where you can get some free ones. I can help you do that. I can help you with um, content, you know, just because you um, might not have something to post about your specific business, there might be something that you could share. You know, we're talking about the American Express shop small. That is something, you know, they will have things out there that you could share on your social media. You know, you want to be able to create a, an image in a position of authority and trust on the Internet in the digital age. And posting things, if you're not, you know, most of us don't have the time to sit down and create five different articles about, 
you know, the top, the top five places to visit in Tazewell, Virginia, you know, but somebody might, somebody else might have written that article that you could share on your social media. And as long as you give them credit for that, it is a way for you to become um, an authority on that topic. So for the SBDC, I like to post articles that relate to small businesses. You know, what are some startup businesses that are happening? What are the trends for that today? What are um, the mistakes that some people are making? Here's a small business that might not be in our area, but that, you know, did a whole pivot with COVID. I have, um, and there's tools to do that. I have a, a tool, it's called Feedly. And I just go in and I put, these are the topics that I want news articles for. And every week it has all those articles from different magazines and stuff. And I can go in and pick. I think this, my, 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 my audience would like to read this. And so I'll share it, schedule it to be shared on this um, day. So all of those things, like I said, I can get as technical as you want or as general as you want, but that is what we are here at the SBDC to help you do. Um, now, I can't say every time you have a campaign, I don't want you to call and say, okay, I need you to help me with this campaign. But my goal is, um, and, and the other counselors as well, is to get you comfortable enough that you can do it yourself or maybe even teach another employee um, how to do those things. And again, like I was saying before, a lot of this stuff is so automated um, that you can just plug in a couple of things and be done. So um, if, you if you're deciding you want to have an e uh, a business with an e-commerce um, part of your website, you know, Shopify is a platform. They can, you can sell through Instagram on Shopify, you can post a picture of something and somebody could click on the product and go directly to your website and buy it. So my, my job is to stay up on top of those kinds of trends and try to be able to present to you the most relevant information, the most um, bang for your buck kind of thing. And I was, you know, Mama Ray, I was thinking about you guys when um, they, Michelle was going to be coming on because I was wondering, have, you know, he was asking about demographics and things. And I was thinking, if you're not partnered with BTC, that would be a good, a good one to partner with. And the same with Ms. Perkins and, and her um, rentals. If y'all aren't taking advantage of the VTC and, and the, and the co-op and stuff, that is something that you need to look in. And, you know, if you come to us, we're able to say, okay, you need to talk to Michelle Workman about this. Um, if you're looking for demographics, you know, I'm not quite sure who my audience could be. We can pull that research for you. Um, I'm getting certified in Google Analytics. I can teach you how to read those things, how to um, stay on top of website traffic and things like that. So we really are a one-stop shop when it comes to helping you with your business. We've got Margie, who's, you know, she's got years under her belt with helping people start and maintain um, a successful um, small business. We've got Diane, who's just the extraordinary assistant, who's got the nicest voice in the world and will help anybody. And we have Misty Bandy, who is our financial guru. And she's gone in and, and redesigned some of our spreadsheets so that they're easier for, for you to use. And it's all about taking the information and making it digestible for you. Um, what, are, what level of information are you comfortable with? What is your proficiency with technology? Let us know what you're looking for and what kind of information you need, what kind of skills you would like to learn and we can, if we can't teach you, then we'll find somebody who can. So I just kind of wanted, that was kind of my plug for, you know, when the Tazewell Business Challenge is over, um, just know that the SBDC is still here. We're, we're not just a part of this, we're, we're a permanent fixture and you can come to us with all of these questions or more. So does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I 
After today, she's going to charge for the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to uh, piggyback on you're talking about get, signing up for services that can give you alerts. I've been using Google Alerts for many, many years. That means if there, and if you have a Gmail account, you can sign up for it. But if there's ever anything in the, on the internet um, that has my name or the organization, I get a Google alert. And this came in handy a number of years ago. I was up and did a workshop in Allegheny, Allegheny County in Clifton Forge. And there was a gentleman there from Nepal, the country. Um, and he actually attended the workshop. And, uh, you know, unbeknownst to me, uh, uh, a month later, I get a Google alert from the Los Angeles Times that says, "There's your name is in the paper. And I go to look at it. And what it was is he had wrote an article about attending a workshop focused on helping develop and nurture entrepreneurship in the Allegheny um, area. And he was very intrigued because that was something that they were looking at doing in this little village that he was from, from Nepal. Um, but that's to me too, he was like the mayor or the, the main kahuna in this country. And I knew nothing about it, but I would have never, ever known about that article had I not been on Google Alerts. That's one thing, and it costs nothing. Two, there are some apps. Um, I'm a big iOS user. There are some apps that you can download on developing and designing a logo. In addition to, uh, Brittany mentioned Canva. I love Canva. I de developed most of all of my uh, flyers, uh, some of my Facebook backgrounds and so forth on Canva, and you can't beat the price at free. And another thing, as you grow your business, there might be a time that you need to, um, you want to do a flyer uh, in uh, Spanish or in another language. Uh, there's a service called Fever that actually you can hire someone maybe from Ireland or some other uh, country that will do whatever the service you, you need. For example, maybe you're doing a video and you want that translated into, um, you know, um, I, Spanish is what first popped into my mind. Uh, they can do that for you. So it's just where they have professionals out there that are wanting to get more um, gigs and you just hire them, send them information. You never have to um, uh, see them or meet them in person, of course, but you can do all this online and send it back and forth. So there's lots and lots of services that are available for you. The biggest thing that you need to do is you wanted to keep costs down, which means you've got to learn all these services and how to do this that Brittany mentioned and that Michelle mentioned, because you are going to be the top marketer for your business. We can't do it for you. You know the ins and outs. For example, Amanda, I think it would be, do you ever do a video or an announcement that you've got the new phone line or things showing, you know, the truck is being unloaded or you're on packing? Unboxing. Yes, I love those kind of videos up on YouTube and, and especially on Facebook that for people that I follow because that that builds that momentum. Um, John, don't you do some kind of woodworking? That would be perfect to do some video of you developing a piece, how you start it from the raw material and, and how you develop that to the final piece, especially if you're putting that somewhere up on Etsy or wherever you're doing it. To have that background of that piece, it's not coming out of a assembly line. It's actually a crafter that developed that. That is that personal touch that Michelle mentioned is that what businesses look for. I'm, I'm not just doing, it's not just the money part is I really want to know as if I'm gifting that for somebody. I really want to share that history that it's not just I just went to Amazon and bought it. Is I want to share with, this is something that I thought special for you, and this is why. But there's so much that each of y'all could do, especially, Deborah, as you're building that new cabin. I was keeping a photo or a video archive of each, you know, once a week or every couple of weeks of how the progression of that. And that could be the announcement of we just finished this new cabin. And to show how what went into that and why along the way, why you all did this little 
little nuances in that cabin to make it very special to people. And that could be used in your marketing. One thing about marketing that I love, which I told you all at the beginning, that's my favorite topic. You're only limited to your imagination. And that's sometimes when you have to kind of step out and it's good to, to, to throw ideas at each you know, different people. I have two sisters that if you want to have an idea, they will tell you exactly what they feel about it. So if you want to use them, they will not beat around the bush. I've had it all my life. Uh, but use that. Um, you know, you can even use this platform that we're doing now. If you've got an idea, sh you know, let us know and let's kick it the, the can around and see if we can help you. That's part of this business challenge is not only sharing, you know, good content, but sharing ideas with each other. Um, we're all in it for the same reason is we want to help you to not only start that business, but we want to help you be successful along the way. So uh, I'll shut up. But any other questions, ideas, comments? Did y'all notice that Pam was really quiet tonight? She said I missed she's Ella. tired. I missed that. I, I missed that comeback from her. But but seriously, <laughs> um, did, did you get any spark, any ideas of what some of these facets that Michelle and, and Brittany mentioned that you can use? Again, don't limit yourself. Um, use that imagination. And you know what I love to do is go look what my competitors and what others are doing and look at the pros and the cons and what their feedback that they're getting and see how I can incorporate that or take that out of what I'm doing and uh, to be able to hone in. One of the things that marketing has changed in the last 10 to 20 years is you're not having to totally rely on radio, TV, or print. We now have this medium that opens up the world to us and most of it is free. It just takes you an investment of your time but you also want to make that investment and not make uh, an ASS out of yourself. Do your homework before you do something. Seriously. That's why you need to ask partners and people around you uh, because people on social media, um, they're fast. And they can, if you're BSing them, they can tell it in a heartbeat and you won't be, uh, you don't want to be in that, line and that's why sometimes it's better before you leap is get some feedback from somebody and um also mm -hmm. compa pair up make partners mm -hmm. i know um i think one of the v i did the vtc orientation and one of them was the community partnerships and 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 being able to identify but you know uh, you know amanda has a clothing store you know maybe she partners with a restaurant so that around Valentine's Day, you know, guys pick an outfit and have a whole thing planned out. You know, you get a discount with an outfit and a, and a date at, for dinner. Um, people love package deals, you know, or maybe with um, the, the new cabinet, um, Foxtail, you know, share this and we'll randomly draw and you can be maybe the first people who stay when it, once it's completed. Um, Think about there's all kinds of different ways that you could piggyback on each other. And I, and I think that's how, you know, why it's so important when you um, are working together, you know, especially when Michelle was talking about the, you know, have at least three entities, because there's all kinds of different ways that we, even if it's just because, hey, we're all located within a so many mile radius. There are so many different ways that we can be connected and promote each other Um as marketing, you know, hey, you, you came and, and you, um, you know, you're at Mr. Haver's and you bought this wonderful um, gift for a birthday. Oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. Um, I know there was a girl here was talking about doing a bakery. Have you checked this bakery down the street? You know, okay, if you mention this, you can get so much off. Just, I think all of us kind of being aware of each other and, and our goal is you know, that's the number one thing. Our customers can promote us, but we can promote too. And it is, you know, again, it, it it's community over competition. That's the new hashtag, community over competition. We're all in this together and we're all about helping each other succeed. 
And we can definitely do that as part of our marketing too. Because I think a lot of people, if you want me to shop local, I, you know, I'm going to want to know that you're invested in it. I see that you're also promoting other local shops um, or businesses. That's a, that's a, a value that I have. And I think a lot of our customers have, and they want to see that. So there's ways for you to promote that in all kinds of different ways. So, and like, and Bill, I was just going to mention on yours, if you, your clients, your customers that rent from you, have you all thought about huddling together and see if you all could do some joint advertising together, put, put your pool of your funds together and do that? Or if they're posting something, could they tag your, um, the facility in that post? Yeah, we, spray do, the word? we do that, uh, especially with one of my bigger renters is, is called the Robin's Nest and she has her own Facebook page. So when she, she does something, she shares it on my page and we go back and forth that way. The people That's that great. follow her, you know, they're starting to like my and follow me. That's great. And, you know, it doesn't hurt for you just to ask your suppliers to see if they have any funds that they give for marketing, especially if it's a new, again, Amanda, I'm just picking on you because I see the samples. What you're doing great each week is having that in your background. But, um, you know, maybe they're coming up with a new line and uh, they want to get the word out and they may provide some assistance that way. There's, all they can say is no. And there's... One thing, one thing else, I have been watching a lot of different videos on businesses since the election because I don't want to watch that stuff. But uh, I did watch an interesting thing. There's a, it's not too local. It's actually, it's not, not really local at all. But uh, she has a small store where she sells a lot of the, the just different types of small gifts that, you know, the, just different things, candle holders, uh, furniture, different different types of things. And she always has a sale once or twice a week on video, on Facebook. She actually has a uh, guy where she buys her some of her things from. He let her come to his warehouse. She kind of did a pre-inventory thing where she marked everything that she was going to try to sell on the date she made everybody aware of the date that she was going to have the sale and invited the, the people to attend it. And man, she knocked it out of the park. I thought that that's, was, that was that's again, that's using imagination and using all the opportunities that sometimes we don't know they're out there, but you know, you got to go looking. Well, I, we had, a, um, I found we, um, uh, we had a client who um, had a, an independent insurance agency, was wanting to expand some marketing. And randomly, I was helping him find some funding, and they, because he wanted to create a website, there was an independent insurance agency, um, you know, kind of association where they had a grant for marketing and technology. I mean, and it was like $5,000. So that's, you know, there's all kinds of things out there that you might not might not be top of mind, but, you know, that's where you can um, come and pick our brains and we can try to see, you know, what we can find out there too with that. But yeah, it's all, you, you the sky is the limit on what you can do marketing wise. Any other questions? Y'all bewildered? Or are you excited? Uh, I don't have a question, but I was just going to say we do a uh, guidebook that's printed that I take care of that's in our cabins. If any of you would like your businesses listed in there, if you will just send the information to me, because I do shopping, hospitals, churches, restaurants everything so if you would like that in there i do location i need your address and then a phone number and then i usually tell them with gps how far it is from the cabins so you can send that to foxtailorchards at yahoo.com if you would like to do that that's great thank you for offering that 
especially for travelers that might want to take a piece of Tazewell home. Well, that's what I thought, you know, like the woodworking and, and places like that, even the, you know, the shop that she has there, the clothing shop, and of course the restaurant and so on. Uh, I list all of those in there. And we've had quite a few compliments on that. Even there, there is a guidebook on uh, Virginia is for Lovers website, of course, with Michelle. I do one in print that I keep updated. And uh, that's, that's one in the each local cabin. area. Ma'am. That's good for the local area, for sure. Yes. Yes. I mean, I do hospitals, churches, grocery stores any kind of restaurant, any, you know, fast food, anything like that. I did that originally when we first opened the first cabin. So it's worked really well. I've had quite a few compliments on that from guests leaving reviews that says that the book came in handy. So. Super. Uh, any other questions? Just want to put a plug in for tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow. I'm not going to be here tomorrow night. I don't know what you say. It's Friday night. Next week is all focused on where's the money, and we're going to have some lenders here uh, as a panel that you can ask questions. They will share a little bit about what their organizations do, but this is your opportunity to ask questions about, you know, how do I get that free money? That's not the question to ask. I'm just going to tell you right now, but to find out what they look for, I guarantee that they'll mention how important that business plan that you're working on is to them. I know at Virginia Community Capital, we would not probably talk to anybody until we see that business plan to understand that you've done your research, that you've got all your financials in place. Um, the uh, worst thing you can do is try to sell up um, a uh, business that you wanted to do when you have people that's been in it for a long time in, in the industry and uh, there's no way you could do that. There's no way you can hit those kind of sales in the first year. But that's why um, uh, Margie and her team at the Small Business Development Center is going to help you make sure you've got a, a good solid plan and that's important. And um, please, I hope you're working on your business pitch of what how you want to lay it out and how you want to do it. You've got eight minutes on the last week that you can do that. And you can use that eight minutes, however you want to do. Uh, that's totally up to you. It's going to be challenging because it's all going to be online, but uh, you can do it. You can do it. Um, and we've actually um, ha had folks do their pit pitch to us before. So, I mean, if they're, interested in talking to uh, our team, you know, we're happy to set up maybe a Zoom because I'm sure that's how it's going to be done. Yes. So just, uh, you know, if you're interested, let us know. Great. Will we be able to uh, share our screen for our pitch? You sure can, because you're going to have, just like tonight, you have panelist rights because you're probably on the bottom or top of your screen where it says share screen, you have that ability to bring up if it's a PowerPoint or if you want to show a video. Uh, again, I, however you want to use that eight minutes, that's totally up to you. But please do not read it off. Whatever you do, that is the worst thing you can do. And we have four uh, judges from uh, business and industry to academia to um, lending. So you, we've got a good process. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Okay. Who wants to take the rest of the night off? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, please don't forget, send me your a uh, completed, signed, and initialized um, uh, guide or, or guidelines. And yeah, I've been sending them to you every week. So you surely, please don't tell me that you don't have it, but we really need those. And because Pam is very particular because she will not, she I was going to let you go forward. I was going to tell them that if they don't send it in, you're going to make me come to their house and get it. <laughs> With a baseball bat. She yeah. likes to watch Snapped. You don't want her to come to your house. I, I haven't seen that show. Is that on net, Major Network or is that an online? Um, well, it's Oxygen. It's also on Peacock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't. Uh, you, you've been warned. Thank you.
Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. It should be a beautiful fall weekend, so take advantage and get outdoors. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.